Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Imaging Ambassador, and welcome to my review of Sony's FE2470 F2.8 G Master 2. Yes, this is the second version, hot on the heels of the 70 to 200 G Master 2. So, before we take a deeper dive and look into what this lens is capable of, I thought I need to go back to February 2016 because some people watching this review own the original. 2470 f 2.8 G Master and the question you'll be asking yourself is is this so much better than the lens I already own so I'm going to try and answer those questions of course uh, back in February 2016 I did review this lens and I was more than happy uh, with the performance of this lens now lens rentals who create uh, MTF charts by testing at least 10 uh, samples uh, came out and after uh, um, preparing the MTF charts, uh, Roger said that the 2470 f2.8 G Master lens is as good as any 2470 f2.8 zoom from any manufacturer. So they certainly match the performance specs of the Nikon and Canon lenses that some people may have um, come over to Sony, and they could certainly expect that the new G Master lens would perform as well as their old 2470 f2.8. Now, if you take a look at those MTF charts, now we're working with the maximum aperture. On the left, we have 24 millimeter. In the center, we have it performing at 35 and on the right at 70 millimeter. The idea is to get those pairs of lines on the left side of each chart close to the top as possible. And you can see anything pretty much above 0.6 is considered sharp. So when, we, when we're closing on 0.8 at 50 lines per millimeter, you, it's fair to say at 24 millimeter, the original G-Master is exceptionally sharp, uh, wide open. Uh, we're still performing ex excellent uh, at uh, the 35 mil focal length. And it's only starting to lose a little bit of its exceptional sharpness at that uh, maximum zoom of 70 mil. Having said that, if you start looking at images captured at 70 millimeters, uh, some will be still more than happy of how it's performing at uh, maximum zoom. So let's take a look at some of my own examples captured with the original uh, G Master 2470 f2.8. Here in an architectural contest, I'm showing the full image and then the 100% magnification. Uh, and you can see that uh, everybody's going to be uh, well pleased with the sharpness of the original G Master. As I start zooming out towards the middle of that focal range here, closing on 35 millimeters, you can see, still see the uh, really crisp detail. And I will have an album of ultra high definition images from the original G Master so that you can zoom in uh, at your own leisure. Here now closing on the 70 millimeter here at 60 millimeter, uh, doing an auto shoot uh, at dawn here, and I've just stopped down to f6.3, and we're getting again exceptional sharpness. Here's an image uh, captured at that 70 mil uh, focal length, and uh, as most photographers will be more than happy of how this uh, lens performs at all of the uh, focal distances, not just the 24 mil. So let's take a look at a portrait, 70 millimeter maximum aperture f 2.8, zoom into 100%. Take a look at uh, maybe the uh, the eyebrows there, and most photographers will go, okay, so this is still sharp enough at the 70 mil focal length uh, for one. What I need. If we compare that with a 24105 f4, um, we're still getting, we're still outperforming um, that uh, lighter zoom lens, even though uh, that um, uh, MTF chart on the right is created at f4, not f2.8. So we're still sharper, wide open at f2.8 on that G Master, and that is essentially what you're paying the extra money for: is uh, excellent performance, wide open. If we look at that 70 mil focal length, yes, the G Master is still outperforming the 24105. If we have a look at a very well respected 35 mil prime, you'll see the uh, the, the 2470 is still outperforming the prime. 
And so uh, uh, a lot of people who uh, want um, the flexibility of using a Zoom don't have to apologize for the fact that they're using a Zoom when it's basically outperforming the 35mm f1.8. Okay, so um, you would probably have to, to outshine the 2470 with a prime, you're probably going to have to invest in something like the 35mm f1.4 G Master, which has exceptional sharpness, which um, uh, there's no mystery here. If we look right in the corner, wide open, you can see uh, wh what you're getting for that extra money on that uh, 35mm. G Master. Okay, let's take uh, bringing up to modern day now um, with the release of the G Master 2. We're looking at uh, MTF charts. They're obviously not going to be available from Lens Rentals, so I'm comparing like with like, which are the Sony M MTF charts. Fortunately, they only go down to 30 lines per millimeter, so it's going to be we're going to be splitting he hairs here without seeing the 50 lines per millimeter. But what is telling is the uh, MTF chart on the right. If we look on the lower right at 70 millimeters, you are seeing even at 30 lines per millimeter, uh, Sony is claiming an extra sharpness. We're we're basically matching that sharpness across the zoom range. So that is something I'm going to be wanting to show you when uh, reviewing this lens. Now one of the big selling points for Sony is they're going to uh, also advertise that this is a, a lighter, um, smaller and faster than the original G Master. So if we look at the specs here, the uh, the length and the width, um, the uh, the filter diameter is the same at 82 millimeters, but we're shaving off almost half a pound off the weight here. And that is a significant difference that you'll notice as soon as you pick up this lens. So Sony are going to claim that this is the smallest and lightest um, 2470 f2.8 zoom on the market. If you want something even lighter, you're going to have to compromise on the uh, on the focal range, i.e. maybe choose a 2870 rather than 2470. And the difference between 24 and 28 is quite a lot. So if you're needing that uh, wide angle of view you are going to lean towards wanting a 2470. Now being a late model lens it's got all of the bells and whistles that we first saw um, released with the 70-200 f 2.8 G Master 2 and that gives us the AF-MF switch, the custom button, the aperture ring which is a new one to the zooms, we have zoom smoothness, we have the ability to de-click that aperture ring uh, which is important for videographers and we also have an iris lock which uh, will come into play if we turn the aperture ring to A, lock the iris and then uh, we won't accidentally move that aperture ring and we then start controlling the aperture from the camera rather than the lens. So this gives uh, flexibility and choice to a lot of photographers. Right down at the bottom this is going to be a significant factor and the reason why some photographers want to upgrade, not because this uh, lens is smaller and lighter but because it's faster. It's faster focusing courtesy of its XD linear focus motors which Sony have been equipping um, pretty much all of the latest lenses with because they want all of the latest lenses to be able to keep up with an Alpha 1 shooting at 30 frames per second. So uh, the, the previous version might have been quick focusing but not blazingly fast focusing and so this isn't going to be an area where the new G Master is going to let you down. If we take a look at the original G Master, the form factor and weight compared to maybe a 24105 zoom, a lot of people would have chosen the 24105 not because of cost but because they wanted that smaller form factor of the 24105, but yes, they would have had to have sacrificed a little bit of sharpness going down that route. So if we compare that with the new G Master 2 on the right now, we're getting a form factor which gives you that 24105 um, half a, a pound lighter a form factor and, and, and a shorter lens as well, but we're getting the optical performance of the G Master. And I'll be highlighting and showing you some examples and I'm going to zoom in to show you that this lens will not disappoint. If we take a look uh, alongside the 24105 on the left and the 2470 new G Master on the right, you can see it's quite close. So uh, people are going to get the, the best of both worlds. They're going to get the smaller form factor with the performance of the, uh, the G Master.
Okay, so if we take a look alongside the original G Master, uh, the original G Master is on the left, the new one on the right, we can see, yes, we're getting that um, uh, much lighter uh, and shorter lens, okay, by investing in the new G Master 2. And of course that form factor is going to be really important for some but not all photographers. For instance, if you like the um, the look of this smaller form factor, you don't want uh, the extra weight out the front of the camera, this is going to be a more pleasing form factor for still shooters but also for vi videographers wanting to put the camera maybe on a gimbal and hold that away from your body. Uh, just that weight saving uh, might uh, prove to be um, super important uh, if you're shooting for an extended period of time. So let's take a look at my examples. We'll start at the 24mm focal length, uh, aperture wide open as you would expect um, because there's no point in showing you stop down here. And of course uh, at 100% magnification, yes, no surprises. I'm not going to say it's sharper than the original G Master which was already uh, excelling at uh, the 24mm focal length but it is, uh, it is not going to disappoint. So let's take a look at the critically important 70mm focal length as I zoom in, I was happy with uh, zooming in on the original G Master, but this uh, I'm going, okay, so now you're showing me the sort of sharpness that I expect to get from a G Master Prime, not uh, from a zoom. So yes, it is uh, it's it is sharper than the original G Master. There are no surprises here, and this is what I would expect from the G Master 2. So another example, again, wide open f2.8 going in. Yes, look at the eyelash. Is, this is um, this is will not disappoint any photographer. Of course, with those new uh, faster focus motors, let's start uh, shooting some portraits now with people who are not being still. So now let's get people moving quite quickly in a triathlon event as they emerge from the water. Again, uh, magnifying to 100% magnification and then showing you even with this guy moving quickly, this lens is going to capture um, not just acceptably sharp, but in, um, really impressively sharp images even with moving subjects. So we'll take a look at a whole series of these images now zooming in to show well just look at the water droplets coming off this guy's face uh, critically sharp and um, one of the things I should point out with the new 2470 um, is it's got a really close focusing distance much closer than the original G Master so at 24 millimeters where we've got a close focusing distance of just over 8 inches or 0.21 meters from the lens so if you're maybe a wed wedding photographer shooting the wedding rings um, um, this lens is going to get you in close enough. You're not going to have to be uh, fishing out the macro lens in those instances. So this is going to be um, a pleasing statistic for some social photographers. Let's take a look um, and put this lens in a couple of different contexts, uh, street and urban landscape. Uh, I'm very well blessed with um, uh, picturesque laneways full of uh, uh, good graffiti so I can just showcase um, corner to corner sharpness by taking um, this lens and camera into these sort of situations. Here stopping down to 5.6. This one wide open uh, and get corner sharpness just go corner to corner because uh, shooting um, flat onto the wall. I don't have to be worried about losing sharpness in the corners of these particular images. Stopping down to f11, getting a little bit of movement blur. It's one of those rare occasions where I um, do want to get some extended uh, shutter speeds to create a little bit of atmosphere in the laneway. And of course I'm going to get corner to corner sharpness at f11. Okay, so now back um, um, uh, handheld now in a laneway f13 uh, and uh, we're just pulling corner to corner sharpness on these examples here wide open still uh, it won't be critically sharp right over there on the right side but sharp enough for most people who are not going to zoom in on these images a um, couple of chefs in between shifts uh, at a local restaurant uh, ducked into a laneway for um, a five minute break and they've had to put up with me shooting their portraits here working at a uh, higher ISO, it's a very dark alleyway, so of course I'm going to be shooting wide open at f2.8, stepping a little bit closer, stopping down, the ISO rises, but again with these full frame sensors I'm never uh, worried about the ISO creeping beyond 1600 anymore.
24 mil um, again wide open ISO 800 um, a little bit of uh, movement going on here so just uh, keeping um, the aperture wide open and the ISO as low as possible in these instances uh, I shot middle of the day just to look at um, the contrast of this lens and uh, anybody shooting black and white high contrast urban environments is going to be well pleased with this lens as you can see from these examples here and I'll have some more towards the end this time color at the 70 mil focal length okay and um, this one uh, moving to wide aperture to get a bit of figure ground separation um, bokeh is really important to me uh, being a I do uh, like my G Master Prime so I'm pleased with the bokeh rendition on this uh, lens so when I'm shooting at the 70 mil wide open I expect to get good defocused areas uh, behind my subjects going in really really close now to um, James uh, I do like to sit down and spend 15-20 uh, minutes with somebody who's homeless uh, um, I think a good com bit of conversation and maybe help them out with uh, to get them off the street for a night is something that we should all endeavor to do um, because they're but they're but for the grace of God go I type of scenario so uh, James then is more than happy um, uh, for me to take his portrait getting in really close um, the eyebrows obviously will defocus but of course the critically sharp point now is just the iris and the eyelashes on James here uh, again wide open I would if I normally go in um, this close to people I often will stop down to f4 if I need the eyebrows eyelashes and iris pin sharp but of course uh, everybody's going to be wanting to know how this lens performs wide open let's take a look at uh, more portraits and action sports going to a triathlon event I start shooting portraits even uh, before the Sun has risen so you will see some elevated ISO numbers here now shooting wide open of course um, ISO 5000 on this one ISO 2000 on this one once the ISO gets to 2000 and, and higher I will tend to push images either through Topaz Denoise AI I'll put a link in the info section below or something like DxO Pure Raw 2 just to suppress the noise a little bit more and often these programs do a little bit of a better job than uh, Lightroom noise reduction so um, but of course as the uh, Sun uh, gets a little bit higher the ISO tumbles to in this case ISO 200 again that importance of bokeh rendition is critically important to me because I do like um, stacking my um, these type of shots I like to get in amongst people and have foreground blur as well as background blur so the quality of that blur is always quite important to me and uh, I'm really pleased with this particular shot uh, because I've got a uh, beautiful smooth bokeh even though it's not a prime lens so let's took a look at AF uh, tracking now obviously that will be important for photographers using this um, for you know sports when the action is very close to you you know most sports photographers may shoot with a longer telephoto lens but will always have the 2470 or a shorter prime to cover the close action and of course this is going to be super reliable if you've got bought or invested in any of the later lenses with these XD linear focus motors you are going to know this lens is going to keep up with uh, the fastest sports action that you can throw at the camera lens combination so coming back to these shots um, captured now I won't be uh, cherry picking one sharp image from a sequence I'm basically going to highlight here that all of the images in the sequence were captured sharp doesn't matter whether I'm shooting 8 frames per second on an A74 or 30 frames per second on an Alpha 1 this um, lens is not going to dis disappoint so I've got lots of these images uh, where the hero was taken from a sequence of images and uh, I basically get to choose my choice I'm not restricted by choosing one and uh, because uh, maybe the one either side wasn't as sharp uh, as I was liking uh, basically they're all going to be sharp and uh, uh, allow you to pick the decisive moment so as you can see here we're, we're just getting uh, super super reliable uh, portrait shots in a sporting context which of course is going to be one of the reasons some people are going to want to upgrade maybe they're already um, happy with the sharpness of the original G Master but they're just wanting to up the uh, the hit rate in a sports action context 
Now this woman has just exploded from the uh, from the water right in front of me, and uh, and the lenses just snapped straight onto her eyes uh, as she's just emerged from the water. So really impressive results uh, from this lens, as you can see in all of these action images. Now I've got some um, uh, from images captured with the 2470 during the cycling leg. Now um, these are sharp, of course, but uh, the Part of the sharpness is because of my panning accuracy in these examples. So um, you're not always going to be able to get pin sharpness if your uh, panning accuracy is a little bit out. My recommendations in those instances where if your panning is not super accurate is just up the shutter speed until you do get the sharp images. So yes, these are sharp and you'll see from the ultra high definition images they are sharp. But what I think I'll move forward to is showing you some images captured with some faster shutter speeds faster than 1 to 50th of a second obviously so let's um, not only show you some faster shutter speeds but let's turn the camera towards the sun to show you this uh, performance of this lens shooting directly pretty much into the sun. Now we're shooting this motorcycle moving rapidly um, using a one four thousandth of a second shutter speed so I don't really need panning accuracy here now but we can also see how the lens is performing shooting right into the sun. If you look at the hair standing up on this guy's arms you'll go Yep, okay, so we've got good contrast, no visible flare in the entire image. So yes, this lens is not going to disappoint if I have to shoot into the sun. I tried to force flare in this one, so I'm getting the sun really, really close uh, to the frame. And of course, we're not working uh, late in the day here. This is really quite a, a bright part of the day, so the, the sun is pretty intense. So I've uh, moved the or crept the frame closer and closer to the sun until I start seeing a little bit of flare occurring. But this is very manageable because um, it's not out of control flare. It comes in in a very controlled manner as you can see from these images where the sun is pretty much into the frame. And I've taken a very low vantage point to, to get that sun this close to the top of the frame uh, basically to force uh, this issue. So you can see on these examples is you're not going to lose too many shots uh, because of flare. Uh, you might just need to just uh, meh. you don't have to bob down to force this issue. You can just uh, frame reliably without um, uh, encountering this flare. Such as here now I'm picking myself up off the ground and the sun is much higher out of the frame. Still shooting into the sun but again now we've got full contrast not a hint of flare. We also got um, I couldn't find any color fringing uh, on this lens as well which you would often find with wide apertures um, on the, against the dark edges so no magenta or green color fringing that I could detect uh, from this particular lens and so more than happy uh, with using this uh, uh, lens in these difficult uh, situations here Okay, so I was inspired by the good contrast uh, shooting into the sun to do a black and white series where I'd have people's shadows coming towards me uh, just to showcase uh, how this would perform high contrast black and white uh, series here. As I said, all of these examples will be available in ultra high definition on my Flickr Pro account. I'm posting uh, 6K resolution images, so they'll look great on a 4K monitor, but they'll also allow you to click to zoom in just to just double check sharpness I suppose. So I always like to say the, le uh, the lens is as sharp as the evidence I can supply. I'm not here to sell sharpness to you, I'm here to show you the evidence through the images I have captured. So do we draw any conclusions from the GM2? Um, and I would just say if you're in the market for a smaller, lighter, faster and sharper lens, the sharper I would say you're really only going to notice at that 70mm focal length and probably only if you into a habit of zooming to 100% or producing very very large prints uh, because m most people who have the original G Master are going to probably still be happy with the sharpness and performance of that lens but of course this uh, new G Master does um, raise the bar higher okay so and if you're in uh, into uh, any of the features that I've covered um, then maybe you want to put this on pre-order 
Now hopefully I've asked, answered a, a lot of your questions about whether this lens is for you or not. If you have outstanding questions or want additional support for your camera, just remember I write 500 page ebooks which people can download from uh, patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor. You can subscribe for just um, one monthly uh, $10 payment and there is no ongoing contract so you can um, just grab the book for $10 if that's what you're wanting to do or stick around because I do have Q&A forums I do have member only seminars over 20 hours of uh, uh, specific um, topics that I like to make available just for my patrons I also have cam set files that I can set up uh, an Alpha 1, an Alpha 9 2, an Alpha 7 R4 an uh, Alpha 7 4 camera just by you putting the cam set file on a memory card and you you can set up your entire camera the same as it's outlined in the ebook if that's what you want to do. So I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Imaging Ambassador, and I'll catch you online next time.